Welcome to the Tasting Room. I'm Carl. I'm Riley. And this is Oliver. And we're here to give you our thoughts about liquor. We're going to try different liquors and see if the novice can tell the difference. So for today's episode, if you couldn't tell, we have three vodkas, Belvedere, Tito's, and Grey Goose. Two of these, these two, are more of your higher-end vodkas, where you don't usually make into a cocktail and people will drink by themselves. Maybe do a vodka and Sprite or vodka and soda. Tito's is a very popular mixer, uh, vodka that people would like to use all the time. It's very affordable and in our opinions, not too bad because we drink yeah. it all the time. Yep. Vodkas and Sprites are usually our jam at a concert or, or something like that. So I'm a semi-professional bartender. I don't really bartend too much, but I have experience in eight plus years doing this and you just like to drink. Yeah, I like to drink. Generally things that are mixed, generally things that don't taste like they have that much alcohol in them. So. Yeah. And uh, I personally don't drink a lot of things by themselves either. I, a lot of bourbons I'll drink by itself. I enjoy occasionally. Um, but besides that, vodkas, tequilas, rums, I don't usually drink by itself. So that's the whole purpose of these episodes. So I have poured three drinks. One, two, three. One, two, three. She does not know which ones they are. I do. She, You have some tasty notes. This is definitely way more than I've ever gotten to these vodkas. Um, you just know what's t- what tastes good. Right. And usually you don't use these in cocktails that you make because they're just ab- astronaut or how you say it? Astronomical. Yeah. They're, increased, too, increased. they're too expensive to make into a drink. They're, and they're better enjoyed in something simple like a martini. Right. So because you're paying for premium. And so like that. So we're going to see, again, this bottle usually runs you, I, I believe, at the top of my head, 20 to 25 bucks. These are over $30. So it's a, quite a bit of price increase, especially when you break it down per ounce. Because um, usually the markup at a restaurant is 300 to 400%. So, yeah. So anyways. Shh, you're not supposed to know that. Come on. <laughs> we peel back. All the curtains at Alpha Mix. Yes. So let's start off with your first card, which we're going to talk about. We will start with your favorite, yes. which is the Belvedere. The reason it's my favorite is I put this in a Bloody Mary one time. It's the best damn Bloody Mary I've ever had because I could totally straight up tell it had a higher end vodka in it. I have a hard time believing that Bloody Marys taste like anything other than a Bloody Mary with any other type of <laughs> vodka because if it's spicy enough, you shouldn't be able to taste it anyway. Spoiler alert. Future episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the Belvedere. Belvedere. It is supposed to smell soft and inviting with notes of vanilla and cream. I like and those. You like those? I like those. All right. And I then like you may also get some tangerine and some rye bread. It should taste on the palate, full and round with medium body, and it should be smooth, rich, and velvety in texture. That does not tell you anything about what it's supposed to taste like. It just tells you how it's supposed to feel in your mouth, I guess. And then on the finish, it should be almondy and it should taste like clotted cream. Okay, so I already believe that vodka is gonna be like a lot like wine, where there's just these subtle differences and people just kind of pick words to describe things that they can't really describe. Yes. So they pick other things that taste and smells. Right, because the whole point of vodka is to be neutral. So any flavor differences you can taste are should be subtle, because if the vodka is good, then it should be neutral, but also round. Sure. <laughs> that's the, I think that's the most I've read, <laughs> is what it says. But book knowledge and practical knowledge are two completely different things, and I'm really good at one of them and not so much the other. And I'm good at the other one. <laughs> If you can figure out which one we're good at, leave a comment, let us know. I literally just told them that I'm book smart. I understand that. <laughs> I'm trying to be uh, a praise or praise or make 
the YouTube algorithm gods happy by leaving oh. comments. Oh, right. Okay. So on comment which yeah. on which vodka you think is better. That's... That too. <laughs> All right. So then we move on to Tito's. Tito's should be clean and white peppery and spirity with a faint discernible sweet taste of sweet corn on the nose. Okay. And I'm from Iowa, so give me sweet corn all day, every day, and that would be delightful. I think so, too. And it should taste slightly sweet. It should be creamy with cracked black pepper. It should be clean, and there will be an evident grain character. Okay. And on the finish, it should be hot black pepper and a lingering taste of Brazil nuts. Never had a Brazil nut. Then we end up with Grey Goose. And... It should be clean and grainy with hints of almond and black pepper when you smell it. Okay. And then on the palate, it should be very peppery. It should be per perfumed on the palate with star anise and rye. Okay. Flavors, which is weird because it's made out of wheat. Belvedere is made out of rye. So why does Grey right. Goose taste like rye? I guess we'll find out. Just adjectives and descriptors, you know? Wine. And then on the finish, Grey Goose should be spicy, warming, and creamy. So what we did was, uh, you know, from the research that you did, mm -hmm. uh, vodka should be put in the freezer to be enjoyed because the freezing process, uh, well, actually doesn't freeze it, but, you know, the temperature, the lowering of the temperature helps with Make the flavor more profiles. And stuff. So you might be able to see condensation on the bottles. That's what that's from. We've had it out, out of the freezer now for about 20 minutes because... This may or may not be the second time we're doing this video, which is fine. Um, again, we aren't trying to be total snobs about this. We're just trying to be your average consumer. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I'm not going to give you a professional review. I don't. I'm not a professional. I don't. I'm the semi-professional, and I really never do this. So, I mean, I've done. Sh we had a, at the bar I used to work at Winifred's. We'd have uh, people travel all the world. And. Uh, people from Russia would love to do shots of vodka, and oh, that was rough doing like three of them in an hour. Yeah, it was rough. According to all my research, um, vodka is a derivative of the word from water, which I believe is voda. Which yes. and so vodka translates to little water in Slavic languages. Interesting. So that's why that's where the phrase "they drink it like water" comes from. The more you know. Fuck smart. So, let's start with number one. I mean, obviously, you're going to peel off alcohol, the alcohol smell. Right. I mean, that's with any alcohol. This one seems very light. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess if we're looking for a word that I read, I would say it's soft. Soft. I think I can definitely smell a little sweetness in there, mm -hmm. a little a little creaminess, but nothing too crazy. But I still smell just vodka. You're right. All right, here we go. Maybe one of these days I'll actually enjoy drinking liquor straight, but right now I don't. So in a year from now, watch this <sighs> video. I've trained. Maybe. Uh, mm. All right, I get almond. I get I some can almond. Taste that. Yeah. Um, it is, I don't know. I mean, I guess I understand why they use the word creamy. Right, because, But, you know, I still, it I mean, it does, like vodka. I, you know, I taste a little sweetness inside there. Um, almond I can get. A little creamy, vanilla, I think a vanilla, it's very vanilla forward for me, mm -hmm. so. Okay. This is just distilled water that we're doing, so we get no copper or any any minerally, any from... minerally flavors, impurities, anything uh -huh. to affect our palates. Right. Okay. Right. Let's move to number two. Mm. Man, this is kind of what's unfortunate about doing this the second time. <laughs> No, I mean, I guess, to me, it smells more grainy. Yeah, I get that. Not as creamy, not as sweet as the first one. Yeah, a little bit sharper. Mm-hmm. Right, ready? 
No. Okay. No. It's definitely not as sweet. It's not as creamy. Very peppery. Very peppery for it. You get kind of that corn taste to it, I think. After the after the peppercorn kind of goes through, kind of that back in that last like thirty percent, um, in there. I don't. I don't get it. Okay. I get black licorice. Interesting. None of these have that word on there, do they? Or they do. Star anise. Grey goose. The crazy French people went to star anise. But maybe it's availability. Maybe I know I'm supposed to take taste sarnie, so I taste it in this one. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Number three. Oliver, <sighs> is it your turn? Do you want this? No, that's mm -hmm. animal abuse. <laughs> I can't do that. Okay. The second time around, this isn't as alcoholy. Yeah. I didn't. I need some more. This is definitely um. I think this is the sweetest of the three smell. It almost smells like vanilla cake batter. What? I think no. so. I don't think so. I can't remember who's a semi professional around here. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? You know what all of these are, so I feel like you're trying to sway my decision in the opposite direction of what it's supposed to be. Why would I do such a thing like that? Because it's typical Carl. Ready? Ready. Okay, bye. Bye. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't want it. I don't like it. Nope. You like that one? It's very peppery. Definitely has a pepper taste to it. I still, I still think it's the most vanilla for it out of all three. Um, and creaminess. But, so. Maybe. Maybe. So yeah, blind test, taste test. If you were to drink, if you were to order, go to a bar and say, I want a martini, which I still to this day cannot imagine drinking three to four ounces of chilled vodka and a martini glass. People do it all the time. Like. Yeah. Just straight martini? Straight martini. Shaken over ice or stirred? Is that what it is? Well, martinis, I mean, it would be straight up no ice. You're shaking oh. to chill with ice and you strain it out. Right. And then a vodka, and then um, that would be, you know, a vodka up, a martini up, and then on ice. You know, but still, people drink that with ice, chilled, poured over ice. Just yeah, apparently straight. that's not the way you do it. But Some people. I know. At the end of the day. Who cares? It's your money. Spend it however you want. Right. We might judge you. The bartenders will probably judge you in their back of their head and make fun of you later. But at the end of the day, it's your money. Spend it however you want. Right. But if you're going to drink a martini, straight up, Belvedere, number... Or, no, wait. No, Sorry. No, I. that's what I she, think it is. She doesn't know. No, I'm just saying between one, two, and three. One. One. And then number two. Mm. Or three. Or your second one. Two. Like, so, if I'm drinking vodka straight... You go one, two, three in the order. Yeah, th this one was the smoothest. It yeah. wasn't as boozy or burny. Sure. Um, this one burned a little bit more. It was it was peppery, but yeah. it wasn't like I didn't get the alcohol burn. And this one, it's still burning all the way down. Sure, so. I I agree with the whole burning. It's the longest burn out of all three. I would go two, one, three. Um, if I was just a drink of vodka martini. It's because you know number two is Belvedere. And I will definitely admit I have never drank a vodka martini. Because it just, there's, again, I'm not judging people to do. It just has no appeal to me at all. Well, I like juices and purees and stuff in my drinks. I just like flavor. So. Yeah, yeah, flavor. <laughs> flavor bomb. Okay. Vodka is neutral. By definition, lacking flavor. Okay, so now we got that over. What do you think they are? I think number one is Belvedere. Okay. I think number two is Grey Goose. Okay. 
And I think number three is Tito's. Interesting. I cannot justify other than things that I have said, why I think what I think, but that's what I think. Okay. So, let's pull out the cheat sheet. What if I told you you only got one right? That wouldn't surprise me in the least. And which one do you think you got right? The Tito's. The Tito's? And again, Belvedere number one, Grey Goose number two, Tito's number three. Mm hmm Get the Belvedere right. Belvedere was number it. one. Tito's was number two, and Grey Goose was number three. Reaffirming my idea that Grey Goose is awful. Okay, let's, it's not <laughs> awful. I just, again, I think they have the best marketing team. That was Patron. They have the best marketing team and way to promote their product. Yeah. Also, I may just have a really bad trauma reaction <laughs> to Grey Goose. <laughs> Because I may or may not have been given a shot of it at a time when I should not have been taking shots. Cool. So on those notes. Belvedere. Belvedere is great. I like it by itself. I, again, I've never had it just in a martini. The best experience I've ever had with it is in a Bloody Mary. Tito's just tastes good. It's cheap. You know, I mean, this is going to cost you five bucks roughly for a Tito soda. Or Tito Sprite, this is, these are going to cost you about seven bucks. Is it worth the extra two dollars to get these two? No. I don't think so. Right? Not for not for something with a mixer. Right now, if someone else is flipping the bill, sure. Boo, 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 boo. But or like if you're having a really high end cocktail, yeah. then sure, Belvedere is great. Grey I mean, Goose probably mixes well I bet with you certain could, things. Yeah, I bet like in a Cosmo. You can tell the difference between these. Oh, yeah. It's very, those are, that's very vodka forward spirit. But in your normal cocktails that I, like, I something I would make, yeah. I would destroy it with the vodka. Yeah. I think I would put Belvedere in more of a, like, a dessert martini. And then mm. Grey Goose, I think, would go really well in a Cosmo because it would kind of right, the not necessarily matches. combat with the cranberry, the sour, but I think it would add a certain type of depth. Right. I agree with that. So I guess what we're saying is we should do a Bloody Mary episode where we try three different vodkas and see, and maybe a Cosmo. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do we do those? But yeah, so at the end of the day, I am a person, I've always liked getting the most bang for my buck. So I'm going to always order Tito's or something because it's still not your well vodka that gives you the big headache in the morning that's like charcoal six times. Who gives a shit? You According know? to Grey Goose, if you have to filter it more than once, then you're doing it wrong. Right. That's what their marketing says. So, and go check out the Tito's website. It's hilarious. <laughs> it really is. Like, we get to tell you what it is. Just go <laughs> check it out. It's hilarious. Their marketing team is hilarious. So. Yes. But yeah, that's it for uh, episode one of The Tasting Room. Go check out our other recipes for some other cocktails that we have going on. And uh, see you guys next time.